Hello, guys. We will start uh, our talk now with our colleague from uh, India. Yes, relating to extracting channel heads from digital elevation models using machine learning techniques. Hope to be an interesting. He has also two other colleagues that were contributing to this talk. Yes. And he will try to fit in the time that we managed to put. I will be, well, as well, I will be your chair for the next uh, events. And we have a gap uh, after the second talk of uh, Jan. So if you have talks uh, or if you have questions, you can ask them. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Naman, and I recently uh, finished my bachelor's from the Insti Indian Institute of Technology. And today, I will be speaking about our approach to extract channel heads from digital elevation models using machine learning. So uh, first, uh, I'll talk about the channel heads. What are these? So uh, this is a very uh, simple schematic explaining uh, what I mean by first order channels. So Consider that, uh, so, so our work, the study area was Himalayas. So uh, a very basic schematics of these, uh, uh, consider that this is a basin for this particular river. And these, the red ones, are the first order channels, uh, uh, streams. So, and these are the zero order basins which contribute to the first order streams. And these are exactly the locations which uh, we refer to as channel heads. And we are interested in uh, extracting their locations. Uh, now, why, why is it significant? Uh, several previous studies have shown that uh, the ecological diversity is inversely proportional to the order, stream order. And it is actually that uh, these lower order streams are still pristine, while the uh, higher order streams may be polluted due to some reasons uh, uh, discharge from industries or whatever reasons, but these lower order streams are still pristine and we can preserve them. So what are the current techniques of mapping the river channels? Uh, one uh, one uh, way is using topo sheets. So the, in this particular example, I'm uh, referring to the survey of India topo sheet, but the limitation is that these topo sheets generally do not uh, carry the information about lo lower order streams, uh, particularly first order channels. Another approach could be uh, optical images, but again, there is a issue of uh, resolution. So uh, uh, for uh, lower order streams, uh, we require a very high resolution imagery, uh, which is not freely available. So one method is using digital elevation models, and uh, we have used this approach in our study. And uh, so I hope you are able to see those little red stars. So those, they are the specific uh, positions of channel heads. So we have used, we have manually digitized those channel heads on Google Earth imagery and used uh, those as the ground truth and the training data for extracting uh, channel heads from uh, digital elevation models. So the data that we have used is uh, shuttle radar topography mission data and the freely available uh, data. And the resolution is one arc second, uh, converting roughly to 30 meter resolution. So what is the traditional approach for drainage network? So let's say that we have a, a sub-basin. So the first step is to generate the flow direction for each of the grid cell uh, uh, of the digital elevation model. So I'll explain how uh, we extract this information. Now based on this flow direction values, we extract the flow accumulation values for each of the grid cell. And then we put some threshold value. And uh, based on that threshold value, we extract the drainage network for any particular uh, basin. So let's consider an example uh, of this uh, uh, 5 by 5 uh, digital elevation model. The numbers that you are seeing here, uh, each uh, number in any uh, uh, grid cell represents the elevation value of that particular uh, area and the size of this each uh, grid cell is 30 meter by 30 meter. The resolution is 30 meter by 30 meter. Now, for so the flow direction is calculated by using the gradient 8 algorithm. So for each of the uh, these uh, values, we calculate the steepest slope, and the, it is encoded in this way. And for each and using this flow direction matrix. 
we calculate the flow accumulation values. So let's take the example of this particular cell. So for in this particular cell, these five uh, grid cells are contributing uh, to that area. That means the water from these cells, uh, these five cells will be flowing to that value. And hence, the flow accumulation value of that particular cell is five. Now we put some threshold on this value uh, to extract the uh, drainage network. Uh, some previous studies have shown that uh, it is actually a better approach to incorporate the slope value as well. And generally, the product of area and slope square is used for extracting the drainage network. So coming to the objectives, the first step is to digitize the, uh, to select first, to select some sub-basins and to digitize those on Google Earth and to use them as the ground truth. The next step is calculating these threshold values uh, from these digitized values and extracting the model channel heads using these threshold, threshold values. Then uh, efficiency testing and com uh, finally coming up with a machine learning model maybe to increase the accuracy or uh, maybe to uh, have more realistic uh, channel head locations. So this is our study area. Uh, so this is uh, the Ram Ganga Basin in the northern part of India, Himalayas. And we selected four sub-basins in this region. Uh, the names MBT1, MBT2, HFT1 and HFT2 are just, uh, they don't mean anything in particular. Uh, they are just for our own reference system. Uh, yeah. So these are some of the results. Uh, please, uh, I would like you to focus on that there is a, a difference in the uh, order of one between the threshold values of uh, based on area thresholding and slope area thresholding and for, uh, for each of these sub-basins. So here are some of the uh, model stream network. So for each of the sub-basins, this is the digitized Google Earth image, uh, from Google Earth imagery, and this is the ground truth. And these are the stream networks obtained using, uh, based on area thresholding and slope area thresholding. From now on, we will particularly focus to one particular uh, sub-basin, that is uh, this one, HFT1. So I would like you to focus on these two particular regions this one and this one. So the area thresholding is significantly overestimating the number of channel heads for every location, while the slope area thresholding is underestimating in some regions while overestimating in other, in, uh, other regions. For example, for this region, it is overestimating, but for this region, it is underestimating. Uh, no, this region. For this region, it is underestimating. And hence the need for machine learning, because we know that the, the channel initiation function not only depends on slope and area, but it also depends on many other factors. It can be topographic curvature, land use, land cover, or many other factors. But we do not know the exact uh, channel initiation function, or uh, what, what should be the combination of these parameters that should be used. So hence the idea uh, that the model itself will learn the channel initiation function and it will uh, provide more realistic and more accurate uh, channel head locations. Yeah, so uh, this is the workflow. The first step is data collection, that is mostly digitization on Google Earth. Co uh, coming to next step is pre-processing. So uh, many times it may be possible that the, there are some missing values. If there are any missing values, we need to uh, fill those values, uh, maybe by average values or there, it can be anything uh, on case-to-case -case bas basis. Feature scaling. So for example, um, one of our features is slope, but the slope value will always lie between 0 to 1. Another value is flow accumulation value. This flow accumulation value can be anything in the range of thousands. So there is a considerable difference in the scales of these values, and we do not want that. Hence, we'll perform feature scaling to bring them to the same scales. Uh, for this particular problem, our, uh, it is a, our data is heavily imbalanced. Let's say for every 100 uh, gr uh, pixel values, there might be only one channel head, but the 99 others would not be the channel head. So the data is heavily imbalanced, and hence we have to perform some undersampling or oversampling. Undersampling is really not a good idea because it's like uh, losing away 
much of our data. So and, uh, what undersampling actually does it, it gets rid of the excessive data that is the, uh, the grid cells that are not the channel heads. So we performed oversampling, that is we replicated those pixels uh, which were channel heads and we, uh, let's say for if there was any only one, so we created 99 other copies of that so that we could bring them to almost a similar scale. Uh, next is training. So we uh, split our data into three sets, training, validation, and testing data. Based on validation data, we performed hyperparameter tuning uh, to gauge our accuracy, and the final accuracy was tested on the testing side. Yeah, so the first approach, we uh, started by neural networks. Uh, so in our case, the input layer, uh, so the features are provided in the input layer. In our case, the features were slope, uh, upstream area, and the topographic uh, curvature values. We had some, this, uh, so this is customizable. Uh, we used Keras to implement this, and this was a binary classification problem. So the output, cell, output unit is only one, so either it is a channel head or not. But uh, it, uh, it, neural network did not give very good results, probably because it was a very small data set that we were dealing with, and neural networks are uh, mostly useful when we have very vast uh, amount of data. So probably this is the reason it didn't work well. So next we tried using decision trees and random forests. This method correctly predicted around 78% of the channel heads on the test set, but it also generated a lot of false positives. So in this case, accuracy is not a good measure to uh, evaluate our model, but F1 score is. And uh, you might notice that F1 score of 0.45 is not a very good value. Uh, so I'll try to explain why these may be the reason. So one reason that we believe uh, is due to the significant difference in the resolution of data. So these channel heads are usually in the dimension of 0.5 meter to 2 meter. But the data that we had was 30 meter uh, resolution data. So theoretically, uh, let's say that the, uh, here is a channel head, and it might uh, only the surrounding area might contribute to uh, uh, for its initiation. But let's uh, since the data was very coarse, it was learning the model was learning from very far regions, which may not be the actual uh, case real realistically. Lack of field data, so. The ground truth was mapped on Google Earth imagery, uh, and there is always a scope of human error, because in some cases there was subjective digitization, because let's say the, uh, there is a region uh, which has very high vegetation. So it gets really hard to, uh, uh, to judge that whether this particular region uh, is a channel head or not. So it's very subjective to the person who is digitizing. So hence the future work. So if we can somehow get a, a high resolution digital elevation model with field map channel heads, that would be very great uh, to test this model. And incorporation of other forms of data, maybe RGB data or uh, a shortwave infrared data that can provide us uh, with insights that whether this particular region contains the moisture or not. Because if it contains moisture, then it is probably high chances that this particular region is a channel, and hence it will help us in eliminating some of the false positives, uh, thereby increasing the accuracy of the model. Uh, that's it. The code is available here. If there are any questions or suggestions, please shoot. There's a question. Thank you for uh, your nice presentations, nice and useful study. Uh, the first part, however, uh, was done in uh, ArcGIS, as I can see. Yes. And uh, you explain uh, the ordering uh, method uh, that, that your study is, uh, is looking for, uh, the, to find the zero order. Um, the QGIS approach of delineating uh, streams and catchments is based on the Strahler method instead of the flow accumulation that is mm -hmm. used in ArcGIS. So if you want to know more about it, uh, I have lots of materials uh, on that. And then you can have your whole work workflow in open source. Yeah, sure. Uh, so this project was executed during my bachelor's. And at that time, we were using ArcGIS. And uh, so we have used similar Strahler uh, network, Strahler order only for uh, the stream order.
Thank you for the interesting presentation and also for explaining the methodology so clear. Uh, I do have only one question, comment, which is related to the fact that, as you mentioned, the uh, classification, the fact that there is water or not, might depend also on the fact that you have a certain type of vegetation or a certain type of land cover, and that's why we are proposing to use also additional data as input like RGB infrared. My question is, considering the fact that your data set is unbalanced, Yes. and you are increasing the space dimensional by adding a new data set, aren't you afraid that you have to create additional and additional training data set for that? No, I don't think, because let's take example of land use, land cover. So let's say that we are generating more channel heads. So for those channel heads, it will pick the same value uh, that it already has from that land use, land cover data. So the whole idea is that it will replicate those values. Uh, it will not need any more uh, uh, external data. So. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so just one comment. RGS is using flow accumulation strutter. Okay, so it's similar with QGIS. But my question is related with the fact that maybe you should incorporate in that the, um, the channel heads usually are very close to the watershed. So maybe a distance to the watershed will be something that we can use in our model in order to train better. Yeah, that would be interesting too. Yes, thank you. Any more questions? No. Thank you. Thank you very much, Namanam.